welcome to day 26 of the challenge. I hope you are well today. You're only going to need yourself, but you may want to be able to easily access either the frame of a door or your chair also it may be helpful for a few of the exercises we're going to do today. So today's workout, 15 minutes as always, but we're going to be focusing on mobility and stretching today. So hopefully by the end, everything's going to feel a little bit freer, a little bit looser, and there'll be a few things that perhaps you'll see that you can slide into your daily activities that might start to make some of the other movements a little easier too. So we're going to start with the head and we're going to work all the way around the body, fit as much in as possible for the next 15 minutes. Um, so let's start just by coming to a nice, gentle, relaxing standing position. So we just want to drop the shoulders down, standing tall. We're going to start with some of these neck stretches we've already done. So dropping the chin down to the chest and then looking up to the ceiling. That's it, tucking the chin, so lengthening the back of the neck and then looking up. And again. Good, and then we're going to come back to neutral, taking it to the side. So left ear down towards your left shoulder, and then taking the right ear over to the right shoulder, and then back to the left. Not forcing it, just allowing your body to feel the stretch and just lengthen to the left. to the right back up to the top we're going to take a look over our shoulder now so looking over the left shoulder don't let that shoulder follow and looking over the right shoulder back to the left looking to the right and to the left once more neutral we're just standing again big breath in bring the shoulders up to the ears and out relax inhale lift exhale release one more time and out we're going to start lengthening through the arms now so we're going to bring our fingertips up towards the ceiling breathing in and as we come out, we're taking it all the way around, trying to hold a nice big circle with your arms, breathing in, reaching up. Out, bringing it back down. One more circle. And then we're going to reverse. So we're going to draw across the same lines if we were imagining that we had a pen, which following the exact same path, just going the opposite way. That's it, opening up through our shoulders. That's it, good. And then I just want you to bring your arms up as if we're gonna start our shoulder press. So bringing our elbows back and stacking our wrists on top of our elbows. And now we're just gonna open up. So we're gonna squeeze our shoulder blades together, which is gonna engage and open up our chest, widening all the way across your chest and shoulders. So bring it back, squeeze. So we'll get the squeeze in the back and the expansive stretch across the chest. Good. And then from here, just dropping your elbows down to your back and then back up to the shoulder press start. Squeeze the elbows in, tuck them in towards your back. And again. It, good. Bringing it there. So almost like a little fork you're making. And then we're going to roll our hands to come down and then come back up. So you take it to the side so you're rolling. Hands point down and then coming back up. You could also do this against the wall. You'll really feel the connection if you do try it against the wall because it will allow you to feel which parts of your arm are coming into contact. Last time, rolling down, 
and then coming back up. Good. Bringing your arms back down by your side. We're going to take a gentle twist. So we're just going to swing the arms one way and then the other. Just keeping the knees soft. Just getting a nice gentle twist through the spine. Again, not forcing it any further than it wants to go. That's it, nice. One more each way. And then slowly bringing it back. And then we're just gonna warm up the fingers a little bit. So I want you to wiggle each of your fingers and thumbs. Just try and get as much movement and stretch and squeeze and stretch and squeeze really get them wiggling and moving as much as possible in every direction. Back and forth, round and round. And then we're just going to start to rotate the wrists. So you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise first. We'll do it both ways. Just try and get as much movement in your wrists as possible. That's it. One more. And then we're going to switch directions, whichever way you're going. Reverse it. So this is probably slightly more awkward. You always go your most natural way first. That's it. Nice big circles. Fantastic. And bringing your hands together and pushing. And that in itself should give you a nice stretch through your wrist as well because you're flattening that out. And then bringing the fingers down. We're just going to start extending through the arms. So straightening your arms, gently bring your fingers down towards the floor, lengthening up through the arm, releasing and then doing the other side, just gently bringing those fingertips down towards the floor, feeling the length through the arm as you're straightening. Good, gently release. Just bringing your arms down, give them a little shake. We're just going to start getting the hips moving a little bit more now. So you may want to use your chair for this one. We're just going to start by lifting that left knee up, just bringing it as high as you can. So this can be practicing your balance all the same. You can just hold on so that you can really focus on just bringing that high knee up as high as you can, squeezing up. That's it. And then this time we're going to come up and then open out and then come back on the same path like an arc. So we're going out to the side, opening up through the hip and then bringing it back into that high knee lift position. That's it, and then we'll do the same on the other side. So start by just lifting your right knee up. Each time just as high as you can. It might become easier as things start to loosen. One more time and then we start with our arc so we bring the knee up opening out bringing it down and then back up and to the front lift open up and then back into the center up and open that's it nice it'll be interesting to notice which side feels easier which side feels more challenging it's always the nuances and the differences between each side. Last one. That's it. Well done. We're just going to open up a little bit more through the hips here. So you might want to hold on to your chair or the wall or a door frame, wherever you've got available. We're going to stand on our right leg and we're going to lengthen our left. So we're going to kick it back and then kick it forward. So we're just trying to get as much height both ways as possible. Try not to twist the knee, so that stable right knee, you don't want to be twisting. You know, just go in as far as you can. That's it, and one more. Lovely, coming back to standing. Now we're going to bring the weight into our left leg and do exactly the same on the right side. Make sure you've got the space. Probably should have said that on the first one. Make sure you're not going to be kicking anything over. That's it. Big kick up, kick back. And 
and last one. Well done. Now we're going to bring it into a nice deep squat. So this is going to give us a nice stretch. This is the point where you may want to use your door frame because it gives you a good solid foundation. I'm going to use the chair. So we want to sit back into our heels. So it might just help to have that hold of your chair as you do this. So we want to keep ourselves in that nice low squat. Now I know often the hip flexors and tightness in either the ankle, the knees, the hips can stop this. So first of all, I want you to try and sit back on your heels. That's why often holding on to something just helps you because you can really sit back, get nice and deep. And I know this one can be really challenging. If you're finding you just can't get your foot flat, often what can happen is you can focus on one side at a time. So switching your weight from one side to the other, so it gives you a chance to have one foot flat at a time. So that's what I want you just to do if you're finding you just cannot sit back as low as you want to be getting. So to just start to mobilize through your hips and then just sitting back, really sitting your weight back so you can feel your hips working hard. I'm just gonna hold it here. I know sometimes this can get intense. If you need to just step up, release, and then try and come back down, please do. Just holding it there. That's good. And then we're just gonna come back up to standing. Again, a little bit of a shake out. We're gonna come up onto our tiptoes now for some calf raises. You wanna come up as high as possible. So we're really getting a nice stretch. We're really getting the ankles moving. We're lengthening the foot, letting the toes spread and grip. That's it. The goal of this is to get as much range as possible. So really squeezing up to the top and then controlling it back down. That's it. So just gonna do a couple more of these because the real focus is getting that wonderful stretch. Now, I want to do a little bit more with the ankles because I know there can be often a lot of stiffness. So again, you might want to hold on. We're going to bring our weight into our right foot so we can bring our left foot up. And then I want you to point your toes and then flex your toes. Point your toes and flex your toes. So you get that nice straight line and then you're coming up and flattening the foot. That's it. One more. And then same, bringing the weight into the left side. And then we point the right foot and then flatten it out. Point the right foot and then flatten. Good, squeeze. That's it. And one more time. And then we're gonna draw almost like a windscreen wiper with our ankle. So we're taking it back into the right foot so we can bring our left foot up and you're gonna take it across one way and then the other. If you're finding you can't quite concentrate on this one, we can do this from a seated position. So you can go flat and in fact, you can even do it at the same time. You can take them opposite ways and then draw the toes together. We're just trying to get as much movement in your foot and your uh, ankle as possible. So a little bit of sideways, you might find it has more freedom on one side than the other. That's it, good. One more time. And then just bringing it round so that we can have a little stretch of our quads. So another great one for this is when I have shown you before in previous workouts. So big step forward with your left foot, keeping the right knee on the ground, hinging through your pelvis and getting that lovely stretch all the way down there. These are the same uh, shapes we're making when we're doing lunges. So it's actually a really useful practice to get yourself into these positions. Just breathing a little bit more freedom and comfort into our joints and into our muscles which will in turn make lunges that little bit easier. That's 
good, good. And then bringing the left knee down, bring the right foot forward again, just holding that nice lunge position, getting that nice opening. And then coming up onto your feet, take a nice big breath, reaching up to the sky. And then we're gonna take it into our forward fold. That's it, good. A little bit of a hand down just to release. And then slowly rolling it back up. Nice big breath in and out. Thank you for joining me for today's workout. I hope you enjoyed that a little bit different and hopefully you felt the difference in some of the movements we performed today. I'd love to know how you get on, so please do comment below and I'll be back tomorrow with a full body workout. See you then.